What's up my friends, welcome back. Today we're gonna take a look at a new project. We'll take a look at this. This is a 3D scanner and should be able to scan any object that you put here on the turning table. And then it will give you a point cloud file. With that point cloud we should be able to obtain the STL file in our PC. And we'll see that later. So I will show you how to build this machine, how the infrared scanner works, how to program it and how to get the STL file. But before that I have to say that the scanning precision of this machine is not that good, but for learning purposes is more than enough. But you could always improve the scanning precision by using a different sensor, maybe using a different lead screw, more steps and more filtering. And we will see that later in the project. Before we start I would like to say that if you like to support my projects I have a Patreon campaign, the link is below, that will be really nice guys. And also visit my Q&A page, the link is down below as always. Leave your question there or answer other questions and help others out. Thank you very much, so that being said, let's get started! This project is brought to you by JLC PCB, which is a manufacturer of quick PCB prototypes for more than 10 years and is the site that I use for all of my PCBs. Once designed, upload your Gerbil files on the JLC PCB site. Get a full review of the PCB Select your desired settings and order the PCB for amazing prices. I've ordered 10 of my prototype PCBs for only $2 and received those in 6 days. Crazy right? So order your quality PCB and make your projects look a lot more professional. What's up my friends, welcome back. Almost all of my DIY projects have a 3D printed case or some sort of printed part. To print an object you will first need the 3D file. You have the file, you print the object. This project will do just the opposite. You have the object and you get the 3D file. This machine should be able to 3D scan small objects with dimensions up to 13 cm in the X and Y directions and no limit for the Z axis. I say no limit because the maximum scanning height is given by the Z axis length of the machine which can be any value, but in my case it's around 12 cm. Just make the axis a bit longer and you can scan taller objects. The X and Y maximum size is given by this. This is an infrared distance sensor and by looking at its datasheet we can see that it can detect distances from 2 to 15 cm. So I wanted to build a 3D scanner, so I've looked a bit on the internet and a few options were available. Using an optic distance sensor, using a video camera and a special software or a touching sensor. In my case I went with the optic sensor. So here is how this will go. We have a turning table here. We place the object that we want to scan in the middle. The distance sensor is placed on the Z axis which can move up and down. We measure the distance to the object and with that data we can calculate the X and Y coordinates and save those on an SD card together with the Z coordinate. So here is how we will do that. The sensor measures the distance to the object, that's pretty easy right? Then the turning table spins one more step and measures the distance once again. The X increment is the sinus of the rotated angle called alpha in this case multiplied by the hypotenuse. In this case the hypotenuse is the full distance between the sensor and the center of the rotating table minus the measured distance. The Y coordinate is the same thing but using the cosine of the angle. The angle is given by the step motor, because each step represents 1.8 degrees, since a full rotation needs a total of 200 steps. Once a full rotation of 360 degrees is complete, the Z axis goes a few more steps up and now we complete another full rotation. We do this till we finish the entire object. Then on the SD card we will find row by row the X, Y and Z data in this format. This data is called point cloud. It's the scan object point by point. But there are no normals or faces, so we have to filter this data. To do that we will use a software called MeshLab. You can download it from a link below. Open the file and install it on your PC. Then copy the TXT file from the SD card onto your PC and open MeshLab. Go to File, Import Mesh and select the scanned file. Here you have to select X, Y and Z format and as a separator select a comma 
since I've used that to separate the data in the code. Here we have our point cloud. Now let's add some faces. Click filter, normal curvature and orientation, compute normal for point set and in this window play with the settings. 10 was a good number for this file. Click apply and then close the window. Now go once again to filter, remeshing simplification and reconstruction and here select the screen Poisson surface reconstruction. Play with the settings if you want and then click apply. Close the window and there we have our file. Now you have to go to file, export mesh as, give a name to the file and select obg or stl format. I've used obg. Now the object might have some errors. I've used blender software to close the bottom part, since there is no scan data for that. Once the file was closed, I've saved it in an stl format and then I've used netfab to repair any error. Now you could open Repetier, import the scan file and slice it. I could now print the scanned file and duplicate the original file. Pretty cool, right? So let's build this project. Ok, so this is what we need. Two NEMA 17 step motors. You could use any other stepper motor but make sure they also need 200 steps for a full rotation, otherwise you will have to change that later in the code. We will need an optic distance sensor. I've used the Sharp 0851SK sensor that has a distance range from 2 to 15 cm. We also need two stepper motor drivers. I've used the A4988 drivers. I also used an Arduino Nano because it is small and works just fine with this project. We need an SD card module like this one to save our data onto the card, a drill PCB and a push button to start the scanning process. For the scanner body you will have to download the STL files that I've designed for this machine. You have a list with all the STL files below. Download the files and print them. You will also need an 8mm threaded rod, 2 smooth rods of 8mm, 4 linear bearings like these ones here on the z-axis part, zip ties and a few M3 screws. Also a power supply of 12V or at least a 12V DC adapter. The full part list is below in the description. So let's begin. First we build the scanner body. Use your 3D printer and print the files. I've used two perimeters, 20% infill with a nozzle of 0.4mm. Ok, so fit the step motors in place on the bottom part. Pass the wires below the motors and get them on the back side of the support. Then add the turning table onto the front motor and make sure it is well centered. Now you should insert the smooth rods in their place. On the z-axis plate fix in place the linear bearings with zip ties. On the back of the z-axis plate put an 8mm nut and close that with M3 screws. Now you should put the plastic coupler onto the motor shaft. Put the z-axis in place onto the smooth rods and add the 8mm threaded rod and tighten it to the coupler. Now we have to fit the sensor here on the z-axis carriage with two empty screws and the body of the machine is basically done. This motor lifts the z-axis and this one will spin the turning table. Ok guys, this is the schematic for the electronic part of this project. Download it from a link below and have it in front of you. Ok, the micro SD card module uses an SPA communication. The optic sensor will give a direct analog value and the stepper drivers needs an enable, direction and step pin connected. This is a graph from the datasheet of the sharp optic sensor. As you can see, the maximum voltage is 2.4 volts for a distance of around 1.3 cm and around 0.4 volts for 16 cm. But the ADC of the Arduino works up to 5 volts. So to increase a bit the precision I've used external voltage references for the analog read connected to 3.3 volts. This is an exponential curve and we will see that later in the code. On a PCB I solder everything in place. Here I have the Arduino Nano placed on female pins, so I could remove it. Two stepper drivers to control the motors. The SD card module female pins on the back, so here I can plug the SD card module. 
Also, I have 3 pins for the optic sensor, ground, 5V and signal. And also 2 screw PCB pins for the main input of 12V. And here, a push button to start the 3D scanning process. So this is the final PCB. Now I make all the connections to the 3D scanner. Add the SD card module, connect the step motors wires and the sensor to the PCB and finally connect 12 volts to the main input. It's now time to program the Arduino. First of all, read all the comments in the code to better understand it. But the general idea goes like this. We read the distance. We map the analog grid from 0 to 3.3 volts. We map the value to an exponential scale as in the datasheet of the module and then we calculate the X and Y coordinates. The Z coordinate is the amount of steps made by the Z axis motor multiplied by 6.25 microns. Why? Well, each 200 steps we have a full rotation and each 8 full rotations the threaded screw will make 1 cm. So each step represents 6.25 microns. We make a loop of 360 degrees and store the data onto the SD card. When we reach the maximum height, we stop the machine. One thing to have in mind. This version doesn't include an end stop. So homing process is made manually. The second version of this project includes an end stop for homing. At the beginning of the code, you will find the variables that you could change, such as maximum height, delay time and so on. Ok, upload the code to the Arduino and let's test it. I place this object on the table and press the start button. The scanner starts spinning the turntable and after each loop it goes one more step onto the z-axis. When finished, remove the SD card and copy the file onto your PC. Here is the file on the SD card and as you can see we have three columns. The X, Y and Z data. Import the file in MeshLab and there you go. We do the same steps as before and we get our 3D scanned file. I'm gonna be sincere guys, the precision for small objects like this is not that good. Maybe applying more filters you could get better shapes. Also when you download the files for this project you'll have the files with some improvements. After I finish the project I've designed the files once again. The turntable motor will be a bit higher than the other motor so the sensor will be able to go till the lowest position without hitting the plastic coupler. The design will have a place for the end stop switch and the sensor will be in a better position since it's not really centered. Also, the distance from the sensor to the center of the turntable will be a bit longer. So check the files in the description. So guys, there you have it. The precision could get better using a different distance sensor and much more filtering. Maybe a laser based sensor will give better precision. Also have in mind that in the code the sensor makes 14 measurements and give the mean of those in order to increase the precision. Below you also have the schematic and the code for a scanner with the end stop for auto homing when you power the machine. Consider using a lead screw instead of a normal threaded rod. Better sensor, more measurements, you could add an end stop switch and improve this project however you want. Please check all the links below and visit electronoops.com for more details, photos and the tutorial step by step. Consider helping me on Patreon and keep this kind of project coming. Also register to my Q&A community and help others out. That's it guys, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.